Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. saying that keeps turning up on everything from religious pamphlets to t-shirts. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. A positive statement, one meant to spread hope and enthusiasm. But hope and enthusiasm aren't so easy to come by. Once old age creeps in and disappointments seem irreversibly final. Think about it. Would you still feel hopeful if your family, your business... Maybe even your reputation were all taken from you? So, this is where you live. Huh? Nice place. I'll walk you to the door just to oh, make... Oh. What's wrong? The light's on. I know I didn't leave any on when I left. Uh, better let me go first. Oh, boy. Oh, no. They really did a job on you. Huh? Oh. Oh. Look what it says there on the mirror. Next time, it's your turn. Why? Why do they do this? Our mystery drama, Something to Live For, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Karen Thorson and stars Fred Gwynn. I'll be back shortly with Act One. There's a sign on the wall of some police precincts. Once a detective, always a detective. The men like to think that their Sherlock Holmes instinct is less something they've learned and more something they're born with. But what happens to a retired detective? Does he lose his inquiring nature, his sharp eye for detail, his thirst for solutions? Or does he grow so desperate to apply his craft that he takes risks he might never have taken if he were still on the force. Consider, if you will, the case of Gus Barstow. Hello, bridge control. Hi, honey. How's my favorite bridge controller? (laughs) Bored stiff. Not a darn thing has happened on this bridge since I got here this morning. As usual. Even on the CB? Uh, Nothing worth listening to. I tell you, since they stuck me out here, it seems like the whole detective division has fallen asleep. Today's big CB news was a stakeout of some truck full of stolen TV sets. But no one showed up to claim it, so they took the truck in. Case closed. Well, honey, maybe they'll wise up and take you back on the force. <laughs> Not a chance. Now, we've been through this enough. I'm too old, and that is that. We're lucky you... They gave me this bridge job, I guess. I won't say it again, honey. Hold on a sec, will you? And I'm, uh, I'm watching someone. Watching someone? What someone? A uh, guy. He's been standing by the rail for a while now, staring into the water. Oh, you think he might? Yeah, maybe. What worries me, he took off his hat. And, yeah, and he's fingering the buttons on his jacket. Uh, that, Honey, got to go. This looks like trouble. <laughs> there. What? Yeah, nice breeze today, huh? Oh, I, uh, I really, I hadn't noticed. Yeah, a little crisp, though. Not as warm as you'd think. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, I'm leaning on your jacket. Here. You want to put this back on before you catch cold? You from around here? No. I, I mean, yes, I... Oh, what's the use? I... I'm a failure in this, just like everything else. Hey, come on. A young guy like you, you got years of good living ahead. Young? No, I'm, I'm old and, and has been. No, no. Oh, 
dear, dear. The whole thing is, it's just so hopeless. Uh, what whole thing? <laughs> Listen, you must have a pretty good story to get this worked up. Right? Tell you what. Huh? You come and tell me your story, and I'll warm you up with a good cup of coffee. Okay? No, but I... Uh, you no know, buts about it. I've been wishing someone come along I could talk to. Uh... Unless you're still determined to keep your appointment with the bottom of this old muddy river. Well, uh, no, I, I guess uh, I... Uh, uh, there. That's better. Now, how do you take your coffee? Uh, listen, officer, I, I don't even know your name, but I got to ask you, what made you come up to me out there? How did you know? Uh, know what? How did you know that, uh, that I wanted to jump? I... I knew you didn't want to. Let's face it, few people do. Uh, Here, drink your coffee. Oh, and uh, by the way, I'm Gus Barstow. Gus Barstow. Yes. If it weren't for you, I'd, I... But how could you tell I was even thinking of jumping? Your jacket. You sit here long enough, you learn all the signs. Blank faces, furtive glances, hands tight on the rail. But the big one is... Someone takes off their jacket. I don't understand. Well, see, the jacket holds a suicide note. People rarely take their own lives without leaving some kind of message. Or at least some identification. Uh, might as well tell you, I felt an envelope in your jacket when I joined you out there on the bridge. Oh, you, you mean this? <laughs> you must be a detective. <laughs> I was. Until they told me I was too old and stuck me with this job. Uh, that a letter to someone in your family? Uh, no, no, I got no family left. Actually, it, it, it was to the police. The police? Yes, not, not, nothing important. Not to them anyway. Just one more attempt to tell them that I am innocent. Innocent? Of what? If, if you don't mind my asking. No, 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 that's all right. It's, ah, uh, what's it all matter anyway? My wife is dead. My business is ruined. My name is Wurzlis is a common criminal. Uh, you haven't told me your name. Kowalski. Jacob Kowalski. Insurance fraud. Insurance fraud? Is that what you're accused of? Yes, that's it. You see, I was robbed several times and I collected insurance. I, I, I thought that was the end of it, but then the police found all my stuff in the back room of the J, J warehouse. So, what's so bad about that? Well, the warehouse manager, some guy named Harper, claims that I rented that room. And he has the checks to prove it. Huh. Doesn't sound too good. Yeah, you see, you don't believe me either. I'll get ten years in prison for something I didn't do. That is, if the real crooks don't get to me first. The real crooks? You know who they are? Uh, I wish I did. I've had threats. Someone thinks I know something that's certain, but the only thing I know is I can't bear the torment. I can't bear it. No, no, no. Hold on. I think you're falling into their trap. I... Don't you see? It's my guess. They would like nothing better than to drive you... Headquarters, this is car 22. Suspects entered building at 6 o'clock sharp. What is that? A CB radio. The police band. Keeps me company when I'm out here alone. But say, listen, did you hear the time? The only way I'm going to get more of your story is if I take you home with me for, for supper. Supper? Oh, no, 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 thank you, really. No, I, I, no wait a minute. You got something else better to do? Well, yes. Uh, I need to be alone a while. Alone? Where? Uh, you're afraid I'm going to kill myself, aren't you? Uh, but you needn't. I'd like to see you stay alive. But I'm also eager to hear the rest of your story, remember? Huh? I'm the frustrated detective. Listen, tell you what. Huh? You let me drive you home, and I will leave you alone. Yeah, so, this is it, huh? Nice place. I'll walk you to the door just to make sure of those... Oh, what's wrong? The light's on. I know I didn't leave any on when I left. Uh, better let me go first. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Oh, 
Chi, they really did a job on you. Uh, anything missing? What could be missing? I, I don't have any... <gasps> what now? Look. Look what it says there on the mirror. Next time, it's your turn. Why? Why do they do this? Jake, Jake. Come on. <laughs> We're getting out of here. You can be alone all you want at my house. But of course it's all right. I'm delighted to have you. I just hope you like pot roast, Mr... Uh, uh, Kowalski. Jacob Kowalski. You know, to tell you the truth, I, I haven't had a good pot roast since... Kowalski. Isn't that Polish? Yeah. And my own family's from Krakow. My wife and I came from Warsaw. Oh. Just after the war. Mm, oh, it tastes just like home. See? I didn't do so bad to bring you here, after all, right? Oh, you did good, honey. So, so tell me, Mr. Kowalski... Please, please, call me Jacob. Well, tell me, Jacob, what made you and your wife choose this town when you came to America? Well, Sophie thought she had a cousin here. We, we never found him, but I did find some work. So we decided to settle here anyway. Well, what kind of work? You, you really are interested? Well, back in Warsaw, I used to repair radios, so I started that here. But when I saw that everyone in this country was switching to television, I taught myself to repair TVs as well. Oh, well, that was clever of you. I got successful. <laughs> Too successful. I started selling TVs, not just repairing them. I even, I even found a line of cheap TVs from Japan that I could import. And you know, before I knew it, my tinkering came to a standstill. My workbenches piled up with paperwork, and and I, uh, the wife she came down with cancer and she died. Oh my! How very hard for you, Jacob. Yes, I not only lost my best friend, I lost my right hand. You see, Sophie, she kept all the books and did all of the ordering. I, I never did have a head for that stuff. And so I ran an ad for a secretary and kept up the importing. And that's when things really got grim. Uh, uh, what do you mean? Well, I started having security problems. I'd hired trucks to go pick up my shipment, and twice the trucks wound up hijacked. And then I hired a guard to ride along in the truck, and my... TVs finally arrived, only to get stolen that night right out of my showroom. So I got my secretary to hire a night guard, but all that did was get us robbed in the daytime. They attacked her and they tied her up and they made off with the goods in broad daylight. Jake, <sighs> you know, your story here has got me remembering something I heard on the CB. <gasps> the stolen TVs. Well, well. What stolen TVs? They found a truck full of stolen TVs parked in some alley. The day before yesterday. The strange thing is, no one ever showed up to claim them. Maybe they're yours. Mine? <laughs> That's a laugh. Mine already turned up. In the back room of some warehouse, the police tell me that I rented. Oh, but Jacob, why would anyone steal your TV sets and then store them under your name? Uh, the police said I did it just to get the insurance money. The trial's next Tuesday. Yeah, well, if you ask me, it's a pretty neat cover-up. Steal your goods, use your name to rent storage space, and then let the goods sit till they find the right customer. And if the goods are discovered, well, everything points right back to you. You see, I told you, it's hopeless. Uh, who was this assistant that you hired? Oh, dear poor Yoko. She's such a bright young thing. She was so good with the books. Yoko? Oh, that's an unusual name. Oh, she was Japanese. Mm. Very helpful in dealing with all those manufacturers. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean you trusted her with all your importing? That's, that's, that's why I hired her. Huh. I think you just found your problem. Yoko? Oh, no. no, no it's, it's, it's impossible. She, she was like a family. Yeah. But she wasn't family. Was she? But they knocked her out cold and they tied her to a chair. I, I found her myself. Oh, this just... trick in the book. No. Oh. Have an accomplice on the inside, then make sure they seem innocent. Little Yoko, do you realize what this means? This could explain everything. The warehouse, the checks, it could even... 
He even explained why they're after me. All I have to do is find Yoko before Tuesday's trial. For the first time since the bridge, Japer Kowalski sounds confident. But at the same time, he sounds frighteningly naive. Take his phrase, all I have to do is. Would you utter such a phrase if what had to be done was the capture of a dangerous criminal? I wouldn't. But perhaps Mr. Kowalski knows something we don't. We shall expand on all this in Act Two. In the old days, old age was respected. Now youth is a matter of pride. In the old days, the words of our elders drew many listeners. Now their thoughts and opinions fall on deaf ears. I shall ask just one question. Aren't we foolish to ignore such a rich source of wisdom? In the case of Gus Barstow, retired detective, those who choose not to listen are far worse than foolish. They're giving dangerous criminals the chance to run free. Uh, got a minute, Commissioner? Hey, Gus, hello there. Sure, come on in. So, how's life on the bridge? Yeah, please. Don't ask. I might as well sit at home, all the good I do there. You're here to tell me you'd rather retire? I would rather be back on the force. Yes. You're asking for the one thing I can't... I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm too old. But I'm not here to ask for that anyway. I got something else cooking. So ask me. All right. You know that truck full of TVs you guys found? I, I, I just want to know who those TVs belong to. Some guy over near Market Street, name of Talpin, says the TVs were on their way to his store from the docks when they, uh... The, uh, the docks? Say, they wouldn't be Japanese TVs, would they? Matter of fact, yeah, they would. How'd you know? Just a hunch. Yeah. Seems like I remember a whole lot of Japanese TV thefts over the past year or so. TVs, radio, stereos, cameras... It's getting so I'm gonna have to beef up our security down at the customs shed. Uh, Chief... Got an idea. Give me the job. It, it, it wouldn't be like I was a detective or anything. Just uh, make it a guard job. Uh, like my deal on the bridge. Uh, I'm not too old for that. And who knows, I might uh, even solve a few... Nice try, but... boss down, but no dice. Look, I'm already in Dutch for not enforcing retirement rules strictly enough as it is. Chief, tell you what. Just let me see those TVs. Let you see those... I don't get it. What is there to see? Well, I won't know until I see them. <laughs> now will I. Where are they, down in the storeroom? Still on the truck. I do have some business down in the garage, though. Come on. Let's take a walk. <laughs> Done, Gus? I guess. Got the brand name, and uh, I did notice one thing. Each set has a small scrape mark, like a chip piece of plastic, on the back, near the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We noticed that, too. Probably something from the manufacturing process. It's too uniform to be anything yeah, else. I just can't figure out why those crooks never came back for their booty. All right. Probably spotted our stakeout. Like you've been telling me, Gus. Rookie cops. Uh, they don't Chief? Have to, uh, Chief, hmm. if they can't handle a stakeout, how can you expect them to catch crooks? You need someone experienced. Just let me spend a few nights as a guard at the custom shed, and I guarantee you... You of an old gumshoe. Uh, you just can't bear to quit, can you? I just can't shake my hunch that all these TV thefts have some kind of connection. Remember those TVs that turned up at the J&J &J warehouse? What, that insurance scam? What could that have to do with this? The, the, those were Japanese TVs, too. And it's my bet they were scored by the same ring at all. Please, your imagination is on overtime. We got the old guy who did that. He stole his own merchandise. Now, look, I got to go with... Here's a piece of advice. When you go back to the bridge, switch that CB of yours to some radio station... You'll be glad you did. Who is it? 
friend of Yoko Nakamura. What's your business with Yoko? I'm trying to find her. I was uh, told you could help. Say so. Uh, this is the J&J warehouse, That's right? what the sign says. So, you must be Harper. You're going to tell me who sent you or what? They told me to look for someone named Harper. And that he'd tell me how to find Yoko. You some kind of detective? No, not at all. Look, I'll be straight with you. I don't really know Yoko. I'm with Immigrations. I got some papers for her. She to... never said nothing about no immigration. You do know Yoko Nakamura. At least give these papers to Yoko. All she has to do is sign by the X's and mail them back I to you. I told you, I don't know no Yoko. Now move on. And if I catch you snooping around here again, I'll call for the cops. <laughs> Honey, you're just in time to join me and Jacob for tea. Why? I'll show you at the spot. Uh, your wife has been spoiling me with tea and cakes and <laughs> all kinds of stories. And guess what, Gus? Huh? We may be related. Uh, <laughs> I just wish it could be so. But until my name is cleared of this criminal act, no one should be related to me. I, I might as well tell you, Gus. I spent all morning... Trying to track down that Yoko. With no luck. I even called immigrations. <laughs> well, well, well. Great minds think alike. I pulled an immigration stunt today, too. That's what I told the guy at the J&J &J warehouse. That I was an immigrations official looking for Yoko. Uh, Yoko? There? But what made you think uh, she... Uh, uh, just a hunch. If she and her buddies picked that place to store your TVs in, then they may have had a good reason... Like maybe the warehouse guy was in on it, too? So what happened? Well, I went looking for Harper. You know, the guy you spoke of last night. Uh -huh. When I mentioned your name, he shut up like a clam. Oh, gosh, you always take such big risks. I stopped by the precinct to see about that truck full of TVs. And they're from Japan, too. Yamaguchi. That's my brand. Uh, what's more, each one of those sets had a strange little scrape mark on the back, near the bottom, as if a small piece of plastic had been snapped off or something. Ah, the seal. What seal? It's the warranty seal. Every TV set has one, so the manufacturer can tell if the set's ever been opened. Huh, I'll be... So each one of those sets... Uh... No, 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 not just those sets. Each one of my TVs at the warehouse had their seals broken, too. But why? Why would anyone want to break... Did, did you test all the TVs to, to see if any parts had been taken, I, I, I mean? No, no, the police tested each one, and nothing was missing. Oh, I just don't understand that. If they didn't take any parts, well, why bother? Wait a minute, there had to be something inside there. And I think I know how to find out for sure if Cousin Jacob will help. Help? But of course, you're the one helping me. Okay. So here's the plan. Who's there? You there! Stop! Step out into the light with your hands up! Uh, Oh, I, uh, I'm sorry, sir. It was so dark. I, uh, your uniform wasn't visible. Uh, we'll overlook it this time. Uh, just put your gun away, huh? Oh, yes, sir, Captain. Uh, sir, I am sorry, sir. The commissioner's starting to beef up security. Uh, oh, but what do I do, sir? Just, uh, continue my rounds? Uh, you keep the outside, I'll take the inside. Oh, and, uh, if you need me... Just use your walkie-talkie. Uh, yes, sir, Captain. Uh, I am sorry, sir. Uh, well, just don't let it happen again. Huh? Uh, yes, sir. I, I mean, no, sir. Psst. Jacob. Yeah? Ready? Let's do it. You sure it's okay now? He's going around the building. Let's move. Wait a moment. Wait until I catch my breath. My heart's pounding like crazy. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go find us some TVs. Wait, wait. I can't find the flashlights. I got it right here. Follow me. All right. Hey, say, 
Hmm? What about those crates? They're about the size of a TV. No, 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 not those. My TVs always come in something much bigger. A, a four boxed TV store crate. Like, like, like that stack over there. Huh? Here, here. Shines a light this way. Uh, good thing we brought this crowbar. <laughs> That's it. I can see the logo from here. Yep, you're right. Yamaguchi. Destination, Taupin Sales Market Street. That's my competitor. He got the contract after I lost it. Yeah. He also got his first shipment stolen. Here, you hold the light while I get this open. Uh, 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 uh. Well, there they are. Four to a crate, just like you said. Uh, which one should we tackle? Uh, uh, this one. No, no, I'll do it. All you do is pry open the staple and the whole cardboard shipping flap comes free. Ah. Ah. You see, dear? That's what a warranty seal should look like. Unbroken. Huh. But if I take out these screws and pull on this section here... Eh, there. You see that? The whole back comes right off. And the seal... Well, that's broken for good. Yeah, but... Yeah, the insides look just like they're supposed to look. Oh, you're giving up already? No, 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 of course not. I'll, listen, I'll take this set apart bolt by bolt if I have to. Uh, uh, now, there is a small space hidden from you just under the tuner. You have to unscrew the amplifier to get at it. Come on, let's do it. All right, all right, all right. Here, you, you hold the amp while I reach in and... and... Plus, plus I can, I can feel something. Well... Can you wiggle it out? Wait, wait, it, it, it is some kind of plastic, a bag, maybe. It, wait. Ah, here. Well, it's, it's full of powder. Well, I'll be... What is it? Jacob, my friend, I think we just uncovered one of our city's sources of cocaine. That's cocaine? Yeah, sure is, and it looks pretty pure. You cut this with an equal amount of baking soda, and you got three grand easy. Three thousand dollars? Well, that's three grand per TV, if each set holds a bag. <laughs> well, pretty slick. Someone in the factory seals the stuff in, and the set gets through the customs. No wonder they wanted my TVs. Yeah, and Talpins. <laughs> Doesn't matter who imports them, just as long as the crooks get their stuff out. Jake, huh? come on. Let's get this crate back together before we get caught. But, and, but, but what? Why worry now? We've got the proof. All we have to do is call the police. And let them blow our chances of nabbing the smugglers? No way, Jake. we got to make like nothing has happened until we figure out how to catch the crooks with the goods. Gus, someone's here. Wait, wait. That was the light. It's probably the guard. Yes, yes. But what if he finds us? Just keep still. Captain. Captain, you're there. I got a call from headquarters, and they want to talk to you. Captain? Gus Brasto snuck into the custom shed by persuading the guard that he was supposed to be there. But now it sounds like the guard has discovered his game. Can Gus bluff his way out again? Or will he and Jacob Kowalski be caught with the drugs and arrested as smugglers? We'll learn the answer in Act 3. By the end of Act 1, poor old Jacob Kowalski was sure that his problems were over. All I have to do is find Yoko, he said. And his newfound cousin, Gus Bastow, agreed. But it wasn't so easy. By the end of Act 2, they still hadn't found Yoko, and their simple search for TV thieves had turned into a hunt for international smugglers. It even looked as if they might be arrested themselves. But were they? Or did these TV repairmen and his retired detective continue their dangerous game and face greater risks later? Let's listen now. Oh, oh my. What, what an adventure. Gus? Jacob? Is that you? That's right, honey. What, what are you doing up well, you expect me to sleep while you two are off breaking into the custom shed? <laughs> I guess not. 
But you can go right back to sleep now. We're both safe and sound. Without hearing what happened? Now, Gus Barstow. Uh, j- j- just teasing, honey. Let's go sit in the kitchen and we'll tell you everything. Uh, over a hot cup of coffee. I got a pop waiting. <laughs> so, did you find any TVs? Oh, we, we found more than the TVs. We found drugs. Drugs? Cocaine. Look here. Oh. I figure there's about three grand worth just in this bag alone. Gus, you brought that stuff here? Why didn't you leave it with the police? We didn't call the police. If we decided not to involve them. At least not until we got the crooks. <laughs> you should have seen us. Right when we discovered the drugs. Wouldn't you know it, in walks the guard. I, I thought we'd had it. Yes, but he didn't find us. We just sat there holding our breath until he walked past our crate. Yeah. And he never noticed a thing. He's probably still wandering around the custom shed, trying to find us. You mean he knew you were there? He knew I was there. I ran into him right at the start, and I convinced him that I had guard duty, too. Well, it was easy, seeing as how I was wearing my uniform. Gus was great. He really had that guard fooled. (laughs) Until the guy decided to check in with headquarters. He must have mentioned the fact that he'd seen me and... Found out that my whole pitch was a hoax. That's when he came calling. Oh, Captain, HQ wants to talk to you. Well, at least I never told him my name. Well, I'm tempted to call up and tell them your name myself. Gus, I don't want you to die. Maybe Jacob doesn't know better, but you should. Drug smuggling is a dangerous business. Anna, Anna, we know that. We've talked it all out. But we've got a plan that can't fail. It was Jacob's idea. I was trying to figure out how to catch the crooks with the goods. And Jacob suggested a transmitter. Uh, uh, you've lost me already. A, a transmitter? You know, a, 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 a beeper. An electronic device that we'll plant inside one of the TV sets so we know where it goes. The crooks won't be able to hear it, but we will through our receiver. And once they've moved the TVs, we will follow. You'll follow? Well, uh, and then what? And then we call the police. Uh, don't worry, Anna. We won't try to confront them. All we want is to find out their hideout. And we know that we will, thanks to the transmitter. And when's all this supposed to happen? Right now. We already stopped off at Jacob's and picked up the materials. And as soon as the transmitter's ready, we'll go back to customs. You can't go back there. That guard will be on the lookout. You know it. it. We'll just have to get by him. We can't waste any time. Those TVs are marked for pickup tomorrow. And my trial's only two days away. (sighs) Well, what's that old saying? If you can't fight them, join them. Gus, Jacob, I'm going with you. You're what? Don't be ridiculous, Anna. You don't don't want to get mixed up. I do, and I will. I can drive the car. Now, where's that transmitter material? You boys better get busy if you want to get back to customs before dawn. Just barely. How's the transmitter? Oh, not to worry. Just give me a few minutes and I'll have it installed. You got it. Uh, I can just figure out which crate is which. It's this one, Dad. You see there? That's where the wood cracked. Right you are. Well, here it goes. Uh, a lot easier this second time around. Uh-huh. Here, now, the cardboard. For the screws. Okay, Jacob. She's all yours. Here, here, here. Hold the light. I have to attach this piece here and then ground it. Ah, there. Now, all ready to test it? All systems go. Hit the receiver switch. Things loud. It's because we're so close. Once we get out in traffic, the signal is going to be a lot weaker. Well, I just hope that guard didn't hear it. Come on, let's wrap this up. Hey, don't, don't, don't forget the crowbar. Oh, right. Hey, nothing like leaving the weapon at the scene of the... Uh, what's the matter? Shh. Quick, behind here. 
Don't move till I signal. Who's there? Stop, or I'll shoot! Where's the car? I don't... I don't know. Oh. Anna must have moved it. Here, here. Try down this way. Oh, oh, there. The lights flashed. Right right there in the loading bay. Gus. Oh. Oh, I'm so glad you're back. Get down. Uh, huh? What? Don't make a sound. I, I can't believe that this is happening. I can't believe you didn't stay where we left you. I, I know, I know. I'm sorry. With dawn coming and all, I just felt too visible. Yeah. This place felt a lot safer. Well, now, now, tell me, why were you running? Because the guard heard us. He came into the building just as we were finishing up. You you, you planted the transmitter? Yes, everything went like clockwork. All we have to do now is wait for our receiver to beep. Oh. Well, Gus, come on now. Who's who's for the first shift? I'm ready to sleep. I, I'll do it. No, 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 no. I will. If I'm the brains of this operation, then at least let me use them, huh? Here, give me the receiver. Uh... If there's no beep the first hour, you'll do the next one. Then, Anna. Okay? Uh, okay. Here, Jacob, take this pillow. It'll make your nap easier. Good night, Gus, honey. And don't be a martyr. Make sure that you wake us so we can do our turn. But I, it's broad daylight. I can't believe it. I, 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 I must have dozed off. Uh, Anna, quick, start the car. The TV truck must have passed us. But which way do I go? Which truck are they in? I don't know. Uh, there, follow that one. I think we've got it. Look, up ahead. I bet they're right inside that truck there. Move up behind it. Hey, that's it. We've done it. Now, Anna, fall back a few car lanes. We don't want to look suspicious. Oh, uh, wouldn't you know they'd pick rush hour? Not there's so much the better. At least this way we aren't so conspicuous. Look, they're turning. Don't worry, I got them. After all this, I'm not going to lose them that easily. They're turning again. Do you think they might be trying to lose us? Uh, I don't know, uh, but Anna, fall back even further. Just wish this street weren't so empty. We're starting to stand out like a... Look! Look, they've turned off! But where? There's no cross street. Uh, they must have gone down that alley. Quick, pull over. I'm going to go in there on foot. On foot? But they'll see you. Yeah, better they see some pedestrian than a car on their tail. Uh, Jacob, you can come with me. Pull over. Oh, don't do anything foolish. We'll be back in two shakes. Just have to make sure which building they're using. Then we'll call Commissioner Murphy. Look, look, they're parked right up there. And it looks like they're about to unload. Yeah, I figured as much. Now, all we got to do is find out which doorway they take the stuff into. Now, Jacob, hang loose. We don't want to look nervous. All right, you two. Hands up, huh? <laughs> Keep walking. Uh, what? Hey, you're Harper. And you're no immigration official. I smelled a rat the last time I saw you. When I spotted that same old banged-up jalopy on my tail this morning. Well, I just knew it was you. Now move. But, but, but where are Climb you? Climb up in this truck. Now, Mr. Kowalski. How very nice to see you again. Yoko, you are involved in all this. And so are you. Too bad you had to get so very curious. But why... Do you do this? Are you... Are you a drug addict? Is, is this man forcing you to... I'll teach him to shut up. Here, Yoko. Help me tie these jerks up. What are you going to do with this? You'll find out soon enough. Come on, Yoko. Let's shut this truck up and get moving. Where are we? Big trouble. I'm afraid they got us good. We can't see where we're going. And uh, and for all Anna knows, we're still walking around back in that alley. I should have jumped off that bridge while I still had the chance. At least then you... Do you hear what I hear? I sure do. And it's coming right up behind us. And the truck's pulling over. 
Okay, driver. We got you covered. Both of you. Now, come on out with your hands up. You're under arrest. Joe, put these two in handcuffs. Yes, sir. I want to get a look at what's in back of the truck. Well, well, well. If it isn't my favorite gumshoe, Commissioner. <laughs> Am I glad to see you. How, how in the world yes, did you... I, I hope you're not angry, but I decided to call the commissioner a little bit earlier today. I got there just in time to see the truck leave the alley. Now, what's this all about? Your wife says you found cocaine in these TVs? Uh, I will tell you all about it, but not until you untie us. Uh, oh, by the way, Murphy, uh, I meant to call you. I may be a bit late for this morning's bridge duty. Oh, yeah? Well, I got a better idea. How about you don't show up at all? Uh, how do you mean? I've been thinking. We could use a good freelance detective. Not someone still on the force, mind you. Maybe some retired guy with some time on his hands. Someone we could call in to help solve the big stuff. Oh, Gus. Uh, no, no, wait a minute. You wouldn't kid a guy, would you? Not about this, Gus. We need you. Well... I guess that means we're in business, right, uh, Jacob? I, I, I don't understand. You and me and Anna. Uh, we'll have to think up a name. Oh, you've lost me too, Gus. Well, what are you saying? What I'm saying is that our new business is going to need a good name. Uh, you don't think I'm going to work without partners now, do you? Oh, no, this is really too uh, generous. Come on, help me. Uh, what's a good name for a new detective agency? Uh, something catchy. I, I've got it. Huh? Uh, how about the Polish Connection? The Polish Connection? It's catchy, all right. But if Gus, Anna, and Jacob keep solving cases the way they solved this one, they'll prove once and for all that those Polish jokes are no more than just that. Silly jokes. But that's not all they'll prove. I'll be back to explain myself right after this message. Some people are pessimists. Somewhere in their lifetime, they lose hope and lose the will to improve things along with it. Some of them keep on living, spreading bloom, and some of them end it all early, unable to bear it. Jacob Kowalski almost joined them. But thanks to a kind word, his lost hope was regained. That's the key, as Gus, Anna, and Jacob will prove over and over. If we just make that small effort, there will always be something to live for. Our cast included Fred Gwynn, Joan Shea, Bernard Grant, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other YouTube channel by searching Mr. Brian McCarthy in the YouTube search bar. Until then, thanks for listening.